Hello guys and welcome back to the Home Turn YouTube channel. It's your presenter Josh here. I hope you're having a brilliant day and a brilliant week. Um, I know we're a little bit late on the upload for this weekend's action at Kelso and Newbury. Um, I apologise, it's been a crazy busy week, um, but I hope you can get this up just before uh, Friday evening, before the racing on Saturday. We're going to focus on Kelso and Newbury, as I said, uh, there are races at Doncaster on Saturday as well, but just to kind of slim everything down, I'll have a few selections for you guys um, to look towards the racing on Saturday, uh, which are going to be specifically at Kelso and Newbury, that's why we'll focus with them there. Uh, I know I've been a little bit slacking on the Cheltenham preview uploads, I was meant to have one out by the end of this week uh, but what i decided to do is because it's been such a hectic week i've got them recorded is just to release them starting next so we're going to have a, a steady stream a little week out then from the cheltenham festival where we've had covered the mayor's races and the open races as well so we're ready to go for the festival which will be a week away hopefully by the last time we do end up uploading um, and then as i said i'll probably release something on the saturday the sunday or the monday before cheltenham uh, which is going to be my set of naps and best bets for the festival uh, once we have the set of decorations down as well but we'll have a full slate of anti-post slips as ready as well ready for that so all we do now is dive straight into the action at kelso and newbury um for this saturday uh, so i appreciate you guys watching and if you enjoy the content please just like and subscribe below as we had we did have a winner last week um when we had to tip three horses the patreon unfortunately was a non-runner which is my nap of the day um and we then had military order win uh, the winter derby for ourselves at uh, linkfield obviously we also did uh, have Blackjack Magic running for us, um, but unfortunately he fell, uh, I believe it was at Kempton, um, which is uh, unfortunate, but he was travelling fairly well, I don't think he would have necessarily won, he may well have snuck into a place, but he was kind of on the on the, uh, the back turn, so I, I, I think maybe before we just made it look a little bit easier for ourselves, but uh, we did have one winner out of AC2 runners, which is which is not too bad as a strike rate to start off with. Uh, so as I say, we're jumping the action now straight away at Kelso, and Newbury. So the first race I'd like to kind of touch on in regards to the, the action at Kelso. Obviously, there's an interesting uh, handicap hurdle to start the day off, but I'm going to, turn, to just touch on the Premier Novices hurdle, which is the Grade 2, uh, which is going to be the 217 race there at Kelso. At the, at the moment, the market is headed by Django Bay. And he drifted out actually since I last had a look last night. Um, this, is, this is Friday Friday in the daytime. That's a 9 to 4 um, best price. That's somewhat more tempting now, but obviously when he was a bit shorter, sort of 15 to 8, 6 to 4, I think he was definitely looked, someone I looked to, would, would have looked to take on. Um, and I'm still definitely going to do so. There's definitely been market moves at the moment for personal ambition of Ben Pauling to 4 to 1 in, to, in from sixes, which is, to honestly be my selection. I, I Obviously, 6 to 1 would have been ideal because that's an each way price, but I think at 4 to 1, you can still get a bit of win value, and I think he's definitely a win better in this. Um, the reason being is he's, well, Django Bay is going to have to be giving personal ambition uh, of Ben Paul, as I said, five pounds. Um, obviously, Django Bay is a previous grade one winner, but did lose last time out in the Sydney Banks to another Ben Paul trained horse out of handstand. Uh, that was fairly, well, only 23, 24 days ago in total. So I think it's a fairly quick turnaround. And I'd be a little bit windy on his chances and his having to give weight away. I think personal ambitions is a horse on the upgrade. Obviously, won his novices or his debut over hurdles um, at Warwick when he beat... Um, another countrywide part limited horse of uh, Jinko Blue. Sorry, I always get them muddled up. Jinko Blue. Since then, he beat him by three and a half legs, and then Jinko Blue went on and won some. Definitely Frank that for me. Won a very nice uh, novices race there at Newby when he beat uh, the Allen trained King Masaccio and obviously Email Andy as well of, of uh, Paul Nichols. So that's very strong form. Uh, he's also then going to won as well, should I say, Jinko Blue, that very valuable handicap at handicap hurdle at Sandown's top weight, and he looked mightily impressed from that. Definitely a graded level horse and personal ambition. Stuffed him on debut um, after coming out of his point to point. Then did sort of flop at Sandown, unfortunately, in the winter novices hurdle um, in December time. That was on completely bottomless ground that day at Sandown. I don't think he really enjoyed it, and uh, he was somewhat disrupted by a uh, faller being south of the border in that. So uh, I thought there are excuses in regards to the ground and, and potentially the way the race was ran for him that may have uh, caused a reason for his flop. He did come third out of five in that. But he was he was out the back of the TV. But then bounced back very impressively, actually, in the new year in January at Doncaster uh, when he won a, another novice's hurdle by a pretty outstanding, well, pretty pretty wide margin of eight and a half lengths to Inuen, Inuen Machine of Neil Mulholland, who was a very exciting bumper type and may not have transited out of the hurdles, but he stuffed him completely uh, and he looked to do it really well on the day with, I think, a lot of room 
for improvement as well. I, I think he's definitely going to come on for that. And I think on the better ground, because you're looking at having good soft ground in Kelso, he's going to relish that. Whereas Django Bay has done his best work on that really soft, tacky ground at Adrian at Tolworth. Um, so I, I think he's a little bit potentially vulnerable to a, a very informed yard as well and a, a progressive horse of um per the likes of personal ambition. I'm, I'm very keen on it at four to one. I've had him at 92, I've had him at six to one. I think he's really my nap of the weekend in the premier novices uh hurdle of, of being the grade two prize i, I think he also worth mentioning he, he should definitely stay the extra two furlongs in this i think he's going to relish uh, every step of this of this race especially on the better ground so i think personal ambition for me in the 217 would be looking to be my, my bet 100 especially with the yard being such hot form at the moment as well and then moving on, I just wanted to discuss more so about the more battle. I don't have a f- solid bet in this. It's a bit trappy, I think. It was the 18 runners at the moment um, being the market headed up by the Nicky Henderson trained under control who's decided to skip Cheltenham and go for the uh, the £61,000 bot here at Kelso. Probably a good move financially um, and probably has a better chance of winning this. Is off second or just on the top weight off 11 so 13 So she will have it all to do, but it's 72 favourite. And I think... If I'm being completely honest, I'd struggle to see a way of her getting beat. Um, I think she's very classy and as a five-year-old. She's clearly going to have still a lot of improvement there as well. Um, the one I do think at a price would be interesting, if he wasn't off such a high weight, it would have been Benson, who won it, who won this race last year, actually. Um, he's, uh, I think, around 11 to 1 best price at the moment as an each race week, but he is off top weight uh, and he's off a, a career high, I'd say, mark. So I think maybe he's one that, may be hitting towards his top end of the handicap so he's slightly more exposed and under control and i think she could have a few pounds up her sleeve potentially in this um, and go and go very well so it'd be a no bet race for me but i'd just be interested to see how both of those two get on as well in the more that's it and then i wanted just to move on to the final race i was covering it at kelso which is going to be the 325 which is the premier chase the listed race um now at the moment the market is headed up by john joe neil's trained monbeg genius who is currently best by 74 so it's fairly short for this i'd be keen to take him on just because i think he's got targets further down the line i.e entry in the grand national and would he really want to spoil his mark for a 28 grand pot when there's going to be a significantly bigger one on offer potentially in uh, the grand national i would say this is just this is obviously a prep run um and i think he may not be going here with the full merits of trying to win then you've got the likes in the market of I Wright, who is who's second favourite at uh, 100 to 30. Um, now an 11 year old and hasn't won since 2021. So I'd just be a little bit windy in regards to his chances. And considering he's been battling out on veteran handicap chases, uh, I think he may not be quite to the level anymore. Uh, I think he's definitely vulnerable to a type in behind coming through and uh, taking him. Then you've got the likes of Elvis Mail at 7 to 1. Um, he was again a 10 year old, obviously, ended up beating uh, Corey Rambler uh, in the Edinburgh Gin Chase uh, on seasonal reappearance, but then was pretty disappointing uh, last time out when he ended up finishing uh, 7th in yeah. December at Cheltenham uh, behind actually Broro Boy that day. I, again, I think he's a little bit exposed. I don't, he's a 10 year old now, not massive room for improvement. For me, I think the one at a it was a it was a better price when I was looking at this, but it, it's still a decent way way to go. Is he was at thirteen to two, which is just under rock. Um, has now moved from thirteen to two to five to one since I've obviously looked to record this. Um, I think he's going to have an interesting chance. He's still a fairly I'd say a fairly progressive chaser. I think he's only an eight year old, so he should have room to grow. And I th- the Obviously, the issue you have with him potentially is his stamina because he's never really been tested massively over the three-mile trip. He's really been stayed in intermediate trips, being a two-mile four, which seemed to be a specialist that his only three-mile appearances have been with his first, in his debut point-to-point, um, which he came second in, and then in last year's Brown Advisory, which was six out of ten in, obviously, behind the real Wacker and Jerry Colomb. I mean, I'm not necessarily saying that's a true run, true standard of his form in regards to the, to the Brown Advisory because that's a great one company over three miles. So... I would be interested to give him another chance down in a kind of listed company where he may well fare a little bit better. Obviously, last time out was second at Musselburgh at the start of February in the Scottish champion hurdle behind Corrigini Rock. Ran really well that day, coming uh, only two legs behind um, Corrigini Rock that day. Obviously, disappointed in the December Gold Cup when he was pulled up after being sort of very strong in the market, a three to one favourite for that all the way through. Uh, the day just never went a mile then or never even went a yard so i i, I would obviously 
forgive him that was clearly an issue um, and they, they kept him out until february for that so after december so he does clearly something potentially not quite right so um that within that day the reason i like him so much is because obviously his win at uh carlisle was uh, to start the season in the colin parker was i thought very visually impressive um i think he showed enough that day to for me to think he potentially would cope with a step up and trip and i just think he's stepping down in company and in grade at the moment so i think regardless he'll have he'll have his chance he was definitely going to prefer the better ground and the one kind of element i've seen here that i, I quite like from a form perspective is that he has done this previously where he's had a fairly quick turnaround because he is obviously coming back from around 27 days ago he did that actually last season at the start of his year when he, he won at, at utoxeter on chase debut uh, and he went and won a, a nice little pot at ascot and obviously chase as well uh, which was before he ended up going and running i think it was a in Grady company after that so he that was after a 23 day break um so I think he's or sorry a 20 day break so I think he's definitely also you can flip around pretty quickly uh clearly maybe something they've looked to do here I think that made that run may well have put him spot on he does have to give four pounds to the field um which is not ideal but I just think at five to one you're still going to get even that as an each way price you get your money back if you if you back him each way and he, he places it would be of interest I think he's just got a little bit more uh potential than some of these especially around the top of the market to, to really uh, challenge today because others that I just don't think Mombe Genius necessarily is going to be one to be winning this for the sake of his mark so uh, obviously with the Grand National and bigger target down the line so for me I, I'd be interested in Thunder Rock and now at five to one each way still get your money back on him as I said so definitely one to look to look to play there at Kelso uh, and then I'm just looking down there towards Newbury now so obviously with the racing at Newbury and um, the big pot of the day is the Greatwood Golf Cup Handicap Chase, which is a 56 grand or just under 57 grand uh, pot for, for, for the winner. And for me, I, I do have one I quite, I'm quite interested in this, and I, I'm going to put him up as well. Uh, this would be a completely win bet, and I think he's going to go there with, with a big old chance. It's going to be the high stakes player of Tom Lacey. Uh, this, it'll be trained by Tom Lacey, jockeyed up by uh, Stan Shepard. I think he's very interesting he's three from three over chase over fences should i say uh last time i obviously won at campton uh which is again fairly fairly quickly um but not too long ago sorry on the 9th of february he end up beating iconic muddle and killer cane that day uh by, by a length and a length and a half um six to one so it wasn't massively fun it was a half decent pot over three miles um in that so he's definitely going to stay I think he's going to relish the ground as well. That, that was on soft when he won that, uh, when he won that race at Campton. Uh, obviously, with it being heavy ground at New Bridge, it's going to be difficult. But he's also won on soft ground at Taunton as well, which can get very boggy um, at Taunton in March time. So I think he's going to cope with the ground conditions and he's going to be stepping down in trip as well. So you know you've got a thorough stay over three miles on the soft ground. I feel as if he's going to have the minerals to be able to see out a trip over two miles five. At Newbury on heavy ground, or two miles four, I say on Newbury on heavy ground. I don't think staying to him an issue at all. I just think he's looked very progressive as a chaser, and I think he's definitely going to be the one to beat in this because he's coming off here as a fairly featherweight mark uh, of one thirty. I think there's definitely room to exploit that. It's only three pounds up from his win at Kempton, which he looked fairly fairly good value for. Uh, I think he's definitely one on the uptick and hopefully he can make it a full time for himself because you look around the the other the players here can do kid i'm not sure he's going to love the ground nichols come out and said he's not necessarily keen about him on the ground um obviously you got ed jet Oil who won the uh at aintree at the start of the season sorry he won the old roan chase that was a bit of a farce with most of the fences being taken out i think i i just don't think necessarily his form it, is the his best on on soft ground or on heavy ground either. he has one on soft but i just think he's a little bit one i'd be looking to take on in that especially off top weight at 12 stone he brings them the rest of them into a really nice racing weight and obviously you've got the likes of Gemma Rand of who's venetia williams who will love the heavy ground but um high stakes player actually beat Gemma Rand, Gemma Rand at um hereford in november uh, when in sort of giving him three pounds as well so i think he's he's fairly well in for that still because only to, if you look at the difference today he'll be running off 10 so nine being high stakes player and jim around can be running off 10 so 13 so he's gonna have to give him now four pounds and he beat him when in receipt of three so i i do really like the chances here of high stakes player um for the tom lacy yard i mean you look at the likes of helton as well of, of dan skelton's he's been pretty heavily campaigned this year and is only coming off of a break of um of seven days so i think it's going to be a very miracle turnaround for him to go uh, kind of close I, I would just be very keen for me at 
nine to two on high stakes player there for for the Lacey Yard, um, and he'd probably be my strongest player today at Newbury. Yeah, that's for certain. And just looking down towards the other races, they kind of they got the likes here. Obviously, I think Florence the Machine is going to go very close in that handicap hurdle at two twenty five. She's going to love the ground. Um, and I think she's got a very, very workable mark in that in that company only for mark of one eleven. I think she's got a lot, to, a lot more um, to come from a perspective. And I think on um, heavy ground, she's going to very much relish that. And I would be a little bit windy later in the in, later in the kind of actually Brentford Hope because they priced Brentford Hope up at nine at five to two. His favourite for that uh, three pm handicap hurdle. I, I think on heavy ground, he's not really going to be seen to best effect. Obviously, X flat horse. Uh, has done most of his best work on good, good soft ground. I think he's going to really struggle in the bog. Uh, but then again, it, it looks like a fairly weak enough race in that in that one. So yeah, I guess you never know. Um, and the, the final one I did just want to touch on was the uh, four f- four oh five, which was the is a novices limited handicap chase over three miles or two two miles seven pounds and a half. And making your mind up leads a market at three to one for the Nichols Yard. Obviously, Harry Cosman booked up to ride. And you've got the likes of Pulling Stumps, who's joint favourite at three to one. Now, when I'd seen this before, before the market had came up, I thought Pulling Stumps would be a bit a bit bigger in price, and that would be one to potentially attack making your mind up with, because I th- he was clearly going very well on heavy ground last time out um, when he was running at Chepsley before he fell. He was pulling away with the leader, who's the end eventual winner of Bells of Peterborough that day, um, for the Philip Hobbs Yards. Philip Phillips Hobbs Yard. Um but three to one, I think it's slightly a bit skinny. I know he's he's running off ten seven ten. He's gonna be get, making him minus count to give him fourteen pounds, which is a hell of a lot of weight to give. Um so that's probably why. But I do like the looks of late making him mind up, especially on really boggy heavy ground. Obviously won very convincing convincing the at Newbury on heavy ground last time out, he, he rocked my way over three miles. It's just a fairly quick turnaround, you'd, you'd have to say for that. So I I do think pulling stumps would have a very good chance, but I just think the price for me is slightly too skimpy actually to, to be really attacking attacking with. Um, if he was a bit bigger, I think it, it may well be pushing him up, but he just wanted to know as well. Potentially, even for the, I don't know if that would be in the ITV7. If it was, then he'd be I'd be pulling stumps on that because he's going to be being given fourteen pounds there by making your mind up. But that's everything in regards to the little kind of summary brief overview that I, I'd have for the racing on Saturday. Um, just to kind of recap my selections, I've got my. I'd say that the nap of the day would be personal ambition in the Premier Novices hurdle, uh, four to one now, and, and then you've got the likes of Thunder Rocket and each way play. It's only five to one, but I think you have to play them each way just because of the stamina. Not hundred percent proven, so each way just gives you a little bit. It would give you your money back anyway. Um, I think he's just going to be potentially have a, a bit more um, improvement to come than, than some of the others at top market with him. And then finally, I think a really really strong bet of my day is going to be a high stakes player again. He's ninety two. Uh, that's a win bet for me in the Great Wood Gold Cup Handicap Chase at Newbury. That'll be the 155. I think he's going to take all the beating on heavy ground. Um, going back and trip, I think he's just he's just going to go straight up and win. So hopefully we get a good weekend uh, to load the kitty up for Cheltenham to come up the week after next. Um, and if you have liked the video and you stayed toward the end, and uh, please let me know if you've got any um, fancies this weekend as well in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe to the video if you are new. Um, but if not, I will catch you on in the next one, which will be our open uh, Cheltenham preview for the open races at China, and then we'll do the mares uh, and get on to uh, and into Cheltenham itself. So appreciate everyone's time, and I will see you guys later. Thank you. Bye.